Welcome back. Today we're going to continue our discussion on atom behavior and their functions when making covalent bonds. So last time we were looking at carbon. Hopefully you still have your piece of paper when we took notes last time. If you don't have it, go ahead and pause the video and draw out this carbon molecule. We have already determined that carbon does not fulfill the octet rule, so it's a little bit lonely. So we're going to give carbon a friend to play with, and we're going to draw out hydrogen. Go ahead and draw this, pause the video, and draw this out in the lower left corner. When you're finished, come back and we'll continue. Okay, we're back. So we know that hydrogen is atomic number one, which means it has one proton. So we're going to give him one proton in the nucleus. We're going to draw the first shell. And we know that in a neutral atom, if it has one proton, it's going to have one electron. So we're going to give it one electron. Okay, there's no other electrons, so we're pretty much done at this point. When carbon and hydrogen are near each other, they can cooperate and share their electrons. This is called a covalent bond. We can indicate that these atoms are held together in a covalent bond by drawing a line between them. Remember that these drawings represent just a moment in time. In reality, the electrons are whizzing around and orbiting the nucleus. But when two atoms are sharing their electrons, these shared electrons are able to orbit both their own nucleus and that of the bonded atom. So this is actually how the bond works to hold these two atoms together. The electrons are holding the two nuclei together, kind of like a sheepdog that is running around a sheep pack and forcing all the sheep together into a bunch. When this happens, each atom can count not only its own electrons, but it can also count the shared electron, or maybe two or three electrons, from the other atom. So let's check on our octet rule. We're going to check hydrogen first. Hydrogen's valence shell is the first shell. To be happy, we need two electrons in this shell to fill it. Hydrogen started with one electron, and now that we've formed a covalent bond, it can also count one electron from carbon. So in its first shell, its valence shell, it can count two electrons. So yes, hydrogen is happy. Now let's look at carbon. Carbon originally had four electrons in its shell. Plus, we can now count, because of the covalent bond, we can now count a fifth electron, the one that we're sharing with hydrogen. Unfortunately, this is not enough for carbon, right? We need eight to fulfill the octet rule. So carbon is not happy yet. In fact, we need to add three more hydrogens to satisfy carbon's octet rule. Let's count up carbon's original electrons plus the ones it's sharing. One, two, three, four originals. Five, six, seven, eight shared. So does carbon fulfill its octet rule, having eight electrons in its valence shell? Yes, it does. Now, carbon and hydrogen tend to share electrons equally, just like this family is sharing a bowl of ice cream equally. Neither one is exerting a harder pull on those electrons. So every time an electron goes around hydrogen, it's going to go around carbon next, and then it'll come back to hydrogen, and then it'll go around carbon next. So there's really no unequalness here. This is what we call nonpolar, equal sharing. So we have to talk about the word polar. Um, this is really important in bonding. I had a hard time finding something to help explain it, and I came up with these two photos. So I think of polar as being very different. There's a different pull on those electrons. And this picture of these two sisters shows that even though they're sisters, they're pretty different. One of them is bright and sunny and you can imagine pretty loud and happy maybe. 
and um, you know just generalizing based on a, on a picture I found on the internet. The other one is dark hair, all about the black, not really looking all that happy. Maybe you know just a different person. These are different people. Whereas nonpolar, you can look at these two twin girls. They look very similar, not different. So when we go back to chemistry and we talk about nonpolar, it means that the electrons have the same force on them, the same pull to go around and orbit the nuclei of each atom, equal sharing. But it's not always that way. Sometimes when you have either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine as one of the atoms, these are very electronegative atoms, which means that they exert a very strong pull on the electrons. Instead of equally sharing, you can see one of the kids here is holding the ice cream cone, and the other one is just trying to get a couple of licks in. And in fact, I used to see this a lot when my kids were little. My daughter, who's older, would hold the ice cream cone, and she would take a bunch of licks. And only when my son, who was three years younger, would start to complain, would she give him a lick. And so what would happen is she would take one, two, three, four licks for every lick that he got. So were they sharing the ice cream cone? Technically, yes, they were sharing the ice cream cone, but it certainly wasn't equal sharing. So when you think of polar covalent bonds, it's when the electrons are not equally shared and it's basically because one of the atoms is hogging up all the electrons. So let's look at a polar covalent bond situation. First, we're going to draw out oxygen, atomic number eight. If you want to practice, go ahead, pause the video, and come back. Okay, this is what oxygen looks like. We have our eight protons and eight electrons. The first two went into the first shell, and then whatever was left over, six, went into the second shell. So oxygen is not happy like this. It's going to want to um, make some bonds to fulfill itself. So we're going to give it a couple of hydrogens. Go ahead and draw those out if you'd like. Here's our two hydrogens. Okay, so we have now drawn oxygen and two hydrogens, which is a water molecule, H2O. Everyone is happy because they have satisfied the octet rule. However, remember what I told you about oxygen. It's going to pull on those electrons harder than hydrogen is. And so instead of the electrons equally orbiting both atoms, it's going to be unequal. The red hydrogen electrons are going to spend more time over on oxygen than they do over on hydrogen. So what does this mean? This means that the oxygen molecule or nitrogen or fluorine, if, the, if, if those were the ones in this bond, are going to pull on those electrons so much harder than hydrogen is that that side of the molecule is going to become a little bit negative. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. So if you have more of them in one place, that area is going to be negatively charged. And the hydrogens still have their protons. You can't lose your protons, but they've lost their electron because it's more often around oxygen. So that side of the molecule becomes a little bit positively charged. So a polar molecule the molecule that's held together with polar covalent bonds has a little bit of a difference across of it. It's not a charged molecule, but it has a negative side and a positive side. We're still sharing electrons, but it's a little bit unequal in our sharing. So what does this actually mean? These partial charges that we see on the ends of polar molecules can result in something called a hydrogen bond. And a hydrogen bond is just when you have an attraction between the positively charged end of one molecule and the slightly negative end of another molecule. And those two things, the positive and the negative, are attracted to one another. Now this is just a transient attraction and we draw it with a dotted line to show that it's not really a bond, it's just a little attraction between two different molecules. 
So each of these is this, its own molecule that has its own really, really strong covalent bond sharing electrons. But because of the polar nature of this bond, because oxygen is such an electron hog, we have created slight partial charges that cause these transient attractions. And again, the function here is the structure informs the function. The structure of a, of a hydrogen bond and these partial charges impacts the function of this compound. So water has high surface tension because it all of the different molecules are held together pretty tightly. So I always think of covalent bonds as like a marriage. You are really sharing everything. You are sharing these electrons. But some marriages are more equal than other marriages, right? So nonpolar covalent bonds are sharing those electrons equally, like the carbon and the hydrogen molecules we talked about first. And other marriages are not sharing equally. Polar covalent bonds share electrons unequally. And what happens because of this is that one of the atoms gets a little bit less time with the electrons. And this causes these sort of partial charge, charged ends to the molecule. And this can result in a hydrogen bond, where even though this guy is bonded to the girl he's holding hands with, there must be something unequally shared in their bond, leaving him partially charged. Anytime you have a charge in chemistry, that thing that is charged will be attracted to anything with the opposite charge, causing a transient attraction. That's it for today. See you in class.